The capsule microphone from NZXT launched last year and it was bad. Though according to every media outlet and YouTuber out there, they would have made you believe it was simply amazing. Now, while I don't want to stomp over kind of old ground, I do want to show you how one simple fix could have actually now made it the very best microphone for the money on the market today. It's a bold claim, I know, but one that didn't quite make sense before, but now actually does. Let's do this. I wish these files would transfer faster. Come on! Whoa, is that the Fire Cuda 510 NVMe drive with its blistering fast speeds of 3450 megabytes a second read, 3200 megabytes a second write, and capacities of up to two terabyte? I can have these files transferred in no time. And if I'm looking for the ultimate performance, I could even get the fourth generation Fire Cuda 520. I better check the link in the description to find out more details. So let's get into the crux of it, and it all comes down to bit depth and sample rate. Now for anyone who doesn't know, bit depth is basically the detail found within sound data, similar to kind of how resolution is the detail found within a picture, and therefore more clarity. The higher the bit depth, the better the clarity. Simple stuff. The other part is sample rate, which defines the number of samples per second. And again, the higher the sample rate, the more samples per second, which consequently gives us more detail once again. So like with many things, the easiest way to analyze it comes down to the higher the number, the better. It really is that simple with something like this, to a certain degree. Now, when NZXT launched the capsule, it was rated at 24 bit and 96 kilohertz. On paper, you wasn't going to get better unless you were using some crazy high-end audio device like the MixPre 6.2 from Sound Devices, like we use for 32-bit float audio. But for the type of gaming audience that NZXT were targeting, they were basically coming in as top dog, competing with the likes of the Elgato Wave 3, which had already dominated the market for quite some time. And this is where it kind of all went terribly wrong. You see, when the capsule launched, while on paper it claimed to operate at 24 bit, 96 kilohertz, at these settings, it sounded frankly awful. And no one picked up on it. And I've got to ask, why? Well, to start with, NZXT branded the capsule as plug and play and marketed it in such a way that you wouldn't need any software. And that's a big selling point to gamers and streamers who don't want to spend time playing about with equalizers and low or high pass filters. They just want to play games. And Windows has their back, as by default, Microsoft sets the audio quality to 24 bit 48,000 Hertz or 48 kilohertz, which don't get me wrong, sounds pretty damn good, but it's like having a Tesla and never taking it out of chill mode. So why, what went wrong? Well, casting back to the launch and after discovering this, it turned out the microphone seemed to be missing a baked in EQ into the sound profile for its rated audio quality. But why did no one else pick this up at the time? Well, when we discovered this, we actually made a video talking about it. From, I guess, an initial glance, it seemed some YouTubers and media just weren't aware that you had to change the quality, and others actually blamed the software they used to record their samples, claiming that they only record at 48 kilohertz. I mean, software like Audacity, which is free by the way, would have quite easily got around that roadblock. So I don't, I don't frankly buy that. I mean, can you believe the audacity of some people? I'll see myself out. So for some clarification, especially for those who haven't seen our original videos on this microphone, take a listen at 24 bit 48 kilohertz. At 48 kilohertz, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. And now listen to the same, but at 24 bit 96 kilohertz. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. So while I'm not claiming to be the next messiah and that we were the only ones who discovered this, we did spark something in NZXT to investigate it and find out exactly what happened. Because while at 48 kilohertz, the microphone sounded great. But while at 96, a profile that should sound infinitely better actually sounded terrible, like really bad and just flat. But how could it be fixed as this is a plug and play microphone? Remember, no software needed. Well, after some time, and I'll be honest, in my eyes, something that shouldn't have taken as long as it had, NZXT has a firmware fix, and now it finally works, like it was always meant to. Take another listen. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. 
So a simple firmware update fixed it by setting the sound profile and EQ to sound as you'd expect it to, which is great and something that we can now recommend as a viable option, especially considering the likes of the Elgato Wave 3 has gone up in price, with most retailers now selling it for upwards of £130 in the UK and almost $170 in the US, while the capsule can be snapped up for $109.99 in the UK or $130 in the US. In a world where rising energy costs and the general cost of living is actually skyrocketing, £20 or $40 is actually the difference between heating or eating right now. So what I'm trying to say is it's not something I'd dismiss. Now it's not all sunshine and roses though. I have to be a little bit critical of a few things. The first being NZXT. How did this not get noticed by anyone other than ourselves? I get it. I've got eTechnics branded products that are available on store.etechnics.com. So I know products like this are made by a separate factory, but to the specifications set out by the likes of NZXT. But in my eyes, that means two sets of people had an overview on this, the factory and the brand that's paying them. I just managed to realize a problem before it launched, but yet it's still launched. In my opinion, it should have been shelved until it was ready to launch at its rated spec. But on the same hand, that would have cost money. So it could be argued from both sides, at least from a brand standpoint. From a consumer side of view though, it was the wrong way to do it. And if I was a customer who, I guess, knew about setting the sample rate and found it sounded like that, I would have been pissed. The other gripe I have comes down to the media. Why did no one else notice this? I mean, I actually invite the media who did have launch day coverage on the capsule to come forward and have a discussion as to why it was missed. Put it in the comment section, put it on Twitter, I don't care. Did they simply miss it and we chalk it down to being a mistake or is there some more to it that kind of, you know, meets the eye? Some YouTubers even mentioned that because they record using certain software, 48 kilohertz was the maximum sample rate they could use. Which to me, in all honesty, sounds like they knew the issue and they simply tried to kind of skirt around it. And if that's the case, why? Surely you owe it to consumers and your readers and viewers to be honest and upfront. Maybe I'm looking too far into it, but just imagine that this wasn't a microphone and instead was a GPU that needed a needed the boost speed enabled or a CPU which involved the clock speed or cores unlocking to run it at its rated speed. If that happened, there would be complete uproar. But hey, at least there's a fix for the capsule now, which allows it to work as it was intended while still being plug and play. And on top of that, there is the fancy boom arm now, which is available, which wasn't at launch. So you can not only have a mic that sounds great, but looks great in your setup and without getting in the way. So if you have an NZXT capsule, I want to ask you this. Did you realize that this was even a thing? If you did, have you just accepted that it didn't work at the rated specs? The good news is NZXT have made the firmware fix available on the product page. So head on over to there, which I will be linking down below and run it for yourself. And I guess finally enjoy the microphone as it was intended, because now it sounds pretty damn amazing. And for the money, I think you're gonna be hard pressed to find anything better. With that, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, a like and a sub to the channel would be greatly appreciated and I will see you in the next one. See you later guys.